This is smithy.tv. Chats here in downtown Toronto at Smithy TV with actor, writer, director Michael Mahonen. What inspired you to get into the business? Well, um, I guess in a way I didn't have many other options. Um, I had uh, finished high school and um, I went to college where I had sort of been uh, encouraged to go to play basketball. And uh, technically, I was studying business, but I would say more specifically, I was studying basketballology, <laughs> and um, so for those two years, I focused m mainly on on the sport, actually. Mm -hmm. And so then, when I got out, uh, I thought, uh, "Gee, what am I going to do?" And then I I uh, took about a year off, and I did a bunch of different kinds of jobs: tree planting in the bush, construction, a bunch of different things, and. Uh, then I asked myself what might be interesting. and uh, I had never really done any acting, but uh, I had always watched actors on television and, and film. And mm, I thought, mm, not, some of it's not so good. <laughs> I, I thought maybe I could you know, do as well as some of what I was, I was looking at. So, so I decided to go to Toronto and uh, audition at George Brown Theatre School. And, uh, they accepted me and that was it. How did your basketball background help you as an actor or did it at all? Uh, definitely, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, especially on stage, you've got to be aware of, you know, you've got to be focused very much on what you're doing in a scene. But uh, you have to be aware of your space, aware of the other people on stage and on a basketball court, it's, it's the same thing. I mean, you've got to really work together as a team. And also physically as well, um, you know, it gets you in good shape when you're playing at a fairly high level. And, uh, you know, stretching and working with your body and especially in theater acting, that's, that's also important. And so um, when we started doing the body work and things like that in theater school, it was definitely helpful to have been involved in sports. And how did your training in theater school help you transition into your work in film and TV? Mm, I, I don't see that much of a difference, really, mm -hmm. in, be, between the two. Um, of course, on stage you've got an audience that's they're there, and uh, you're not going to be you don't have cameras set up that are cutting and set up to make sure they're catching your face. So you've got to be aware of telling the story to the audience. Not necessarily always facing them. Sometimes you can say more with your back turned, actually. Um, but uh, the transition to film and television was, I mean, the focus is just more specific, you know, because mainly you're on, you know, medium, two shots, singles. And so your focus is very much on whoever it is you're playing the scene with or whatever it is that you're focused on. Um, but. But the basic, the basic aspects of acting and being truthful and being in the moment and having done your preparation and your research and understanding the character to the best of your ability, uh, it's the same deal as far as I'm concerned, yeah. And what was it like winning a Gemini for your role in Conspiracy of Silence? Um, that was, uh, I, I would have to say that was a quite an honor, uh, partly because of the company I was in. Uh, the other nominees, uh, you know, in Canada we don't promote actors, um, unfortunately, but we have some of the best actors in the world, and I was nominated with uh, uh, a friend of mine, actually, uh, Michael Riley, um, and uh, Stephen we met, who is uh, one of the top actors in Canada and, you know, in the world, um, as is Riley, and uh, the late... Uh, um, Neil Monroe, who was, he became mainly a director later at, at the Shaw Festival, a director of theater, uh, which I, I think some of his work was genius as a director, and um, as an actor he was also extremely talented, so when I just saw my name 
among those guys, you know, having just been out of school for a couple of years, it was like, wow. So um, when I was chosen, um, you know, I, I paid respect to them first off in, in my acceptance speech. And uh, so because of that, it was uh, uh, definitely an honor. And what was the best part about playing Gus Pike on Road to Avonlea? Uh, <laughs> there were a lot of there were a lot of really cool aspects to that. Um, you know, hanging out with kids, you know, on the set, and uh, it's just fun. You know, you can sometimes just be a kid again. You know, joke around and fool around, and uh, also being out um, on the set in Uxbridge out in the country, especially in the summer, was just great, you know. It's it's as beautiful there as it looks on the screen, you know, rolling fields of, you know, long fluffy grass and stuff like that. So yeah, it was it was a great show to work on. The crew was excellent, great bunch of guys. Um, everyone, hair, makeup, you know, the the whole deal is really, really pleasant. Okay. And what are you hoping to work on in the future? Uh, well, I've been focusing more on writing and directing, and um, right now, uh, totally unexpectedly, uh, I had been asked a couple of years ago f by a friend if I would be interested in um, working on some 3D animation, and so never having done that before, knowing nothing about the technical aspects, I said, sure, <laughs> because, you know, it's a new challenge, and... Um, so I've been focusing on that. Uh, we've got the uh, first couple of episodes of a series in a can that's based on, uh, well, finishing post-production on, on the first one. But the, uh, it's based on uh, uh, a martial arts master in ancient China who has a secluded temple on a mountain and he has a couple of uh, martial arts disciples. And um, they go out and they defend different areas of ancient China from various mythical beasts. <laughs> and so I've been uh, writing and directing that. Yeah. And you also wrote and directed Sandstorm. What was it like to go on the festival circuit with that and to win 29 awards? Well, that was unexpected. I mean, I, I, I initially wrote the film with the idea of trying to awaken the consciences of the policemen in China who are persecuting people um, who do a practice called Falun Gong or Falun Dafa and it's been going on for 13 years now and it's been condemned by all the major human rights organizations and uh, the United Nations and many governments and um, a lot of the policemen are, are pressured a lot to participate in this persecution um, and so because they're on the front line, so to speak, I wanted to I wanted to present themselves with themselves. I wanted to get them to kind of look from a third person perspective at you know the things they're doing and put it in, in a movie. And so uh, the movie was made. Everyone volunteered. Most people had never worked on a movie set at all, and uh, it was it was challenging, but we got it done. And uh, then. Uh, once it was verified that it had been successfully sent into China and uh, that uh, the Falun Gong practitioners there had made copies and were getting it actually into the hands of police safely, um, that's when it, it just occurred to me maybe this would strike a chord with Western audiences as well. And so at that point, I decided to take a shot at entering it into some festivals and it was accepted and started winning awards and the audience reactions were really great. Uh, you know, a lot of tears and Q&A's, <laughs> a lot of Q&A's at the festivals. I went, uh, yeah, I, went to, uh, I went to a couple of places in Spain, I went to India, I went to Moscow, Russia, I went to uh, Kiev, Ukraine. Uh, all over the states, and uh, the reaction to the movie was very, very powerful, I would say. And um, that was sort of the most um, profound, I guess, aspect of, of the whole experience, was to see how, how this movie 
that was portraying people who were being uh, unjustly persecuted, how it was touching, touching the hearts of the people who were watching watching the movie. And the, the awards were, every time it was a surprise, I can honestly say. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to all of the festivals that had awards. I didn't go to 29 festivals. It, was, it screened in about 60, and, and I was, I don't know, about 25 festivals. Mm -hmm. And what advice would you give to someone who's an aspiring actor or filmmaker? Um, <laughs> get a trade. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I say this seriously. Um, I, would, I would say um, if it's something you feel in your heart that you need to do, you need to communicate something. Um, if, if you're doing it because you want to get famous, if you're doing it because you want to get rich, um, I, I'd say think about it a little bit more. Um, and, and if you do it, I would say do it because you feel that there's something you really want and need to communicate with the world in, in regards to the art of acting or the art of directing or the art of writing. And uh, hopefully with some kind of a deeper benevolent purpose behind it. And that will take you through the difficult times as well because that's, that's sort of the, the reason why you're doing it. But uh, I say a trade because, um, I mean, uh, you know, trades are honorable. You know, anything from carpentry, fine carpentry, to all, all, all kinds of trades. I mean, if, uh, if one can do that, then one will have, always have opportunities for employment. Mm -hmm. For example, if one gets into uh, something to do with IT, computers or something, if you're not upgrading your training every six months or so, you're going to be you know, obsolete within a couple of years. But uh, with trades, it's pretty much, you know, same kind of deal. Mm -hmm. and, and it's honorable, and I think it's good for someone to uh, get away from the business sometimes and sort of refuel and get in touch with, with real tangible aspects of life. Um, Daniel Day Lewis, who's one of the greatest actors, I, th I think, ever uh, in film, um, you know, he's taken long periods off. Once he took a couple of years off to learn how to be a world-class shoemaker. And he trained, trained with a guy in Italy to do that. And, you know, um, I can understand the sort of benefits of, of doing that kind of thing because it gets you in touch with life again. How did you get involved in the activism? Um, well, I uh, started reading about the persecution of Falun Gong practitioners uh, shortly after it started in 1999 and um, I wondered what it was about because there was no rationale by the Chinese regime given uh, they were just name calling uh, so I thought there's something off about what's going on and uh, after reading some articles one day I opened my apartment door and there was this little black and white news flyer there that said truth compassion forbearance and I thought wow who's, who's saying all of this and uh, I read it, and it, this was the group that was being persecuted. And uh, over a number of months, I started looking at the website, uh, the Canadian website, and uh, then I started reading the teachings, and it struck a chord in me. And, and I thought, everything's for free, nothing to join, nothing's asked from you. And uh, I thought, you know, these people are being persecuted, and I'm really benefiting from this practice. And, I didn't feel it was right to just sit back and do nothing while people were being so brutally persecuted. And uh, that eventually led to Sandstorm, but there's a number of other things I've done as well, writing some articles for some newspapers and stuff. And how has the practice helped you in your daily life? Um, it's helped me to uh, become a better person, I would say, in, in a number of ways. Um, the principles of truth, compassion, forbearance, always trying to keep those in your mind uh, really changes a person sort of in, in a fundamental way for the, for the better. Um, you know, family and friends have seen it and uh, have had very positive comments about it. And um, of course health, I mean, I've been practicing now for 13 years and I haven't even had a cold, nothing for that, that time period. And, uh, yeah, it's just, just a, a broader perspective of life in general as well. 
And where is the best place to find out more information on you and your work online? Uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of stuff um, on, uh, on, on the internet, like there's fan websites and, and that kind of thing. Uh, so if you just Googled Michael Mahonen, mm -hmm. you'd uh, get probably more than you'd, you'd be wanting to see. <laughs> um, not in a bad way. Uh, <laughs> not that I know of, anyway. Um, uh, or I mean, you know, Facebook. I mean, I had an, I have my Facebook site open to anybody, and there's a there's a Sandstorm movie site on Facebook as well. Um, yeah, so there's there's quite a bit of stuff there. Thank you so much, Michael. Congratulations on all of your success, and best of luck with your upcoming projects. Right. Thanks, Katie. Thank you. I'm Katie Ullman, reporting for Katie Chats here at Smithy TV in downtown Toronto.